Hello and welcome to Quarterlight, your car brochure channel. In today's episode, we're going to continue our 1983 look at the Austin Rover range with the Austin Ambassador. Welcome back. And if you're new to Quarterlight, uh, we look at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s. We even go beyond that range as well when it suits us. But if you're interested in cars and car brochures, give us a chance, give us a subscribe. It really helps the channel. And it's nice to see our very tiny little channel slowly growing and I'm really appreciating the number of comments increasing. I really enjoy reading those. Even if I just give you a like, you know, I've, I've enjoyed reading your comment and thank you so much for that. Now, today's episode, we've been looking at the 1983 range for British Leyland, slowly going through the range brochure. We've reached the Austin Ambassador, which was launched in 1982. It's kind of like a heavily revised princess. Um, and it's a bit of a strange one actually, it only lasted for a couple of years, but let's have a look at this car now. So here we go, the Austin Ambassador, ran from 82 to 84, so only a very short run. Kind of like a heavily updated uh, Austin Princess really. And like I say, they changed it a lot, and it must have cost them a lot of money, and it only lasted two years. I don't know if it was a particularly sensible move by British Leyland, as always. But it's a time when they finally decided, yes, hatchbacks are a good thing. Way too late to the party, as always, but at least it finally arrived as a hatchback. And obviously, the practicality of the vehicle was much improved because of that and you know that's what people want at the end of the day very high lip kind of like a bit of an old-fashioned looking car really for this time 1983 right in the middle of the austin ambassador run the good thing about it of course it was a lot of car for the money really it was a very spacious car for how much it would have been space travel at down to earth prices Anyway, let's open the brochure up and let's have a look how the range went at this time. So here is the first model in the range, the Austin Ambassador L. So your base model loveliness here. Interesting fact about the Austin um, Ambassador was, there was considering calling it the Wolseley, so the Wolseley Ambassador. Can't, like, can't think it quite suits the car really, that's... Um, but I always like these Anglia designs. Harris Mann design, of course, the late, great Harris Mann. I liked his Anglia designs. And that was, even though there were lots of changes from the Princess, still holding that Anglia design. Fortunately, they lowered the, the bonnet, which did help the aerodynamics, but we've now no longer got hidden wipers because of that. But like I say, not a popular car in its time, really, but... Like I said, I did like that sort of uh, angular design that Harris Mann kind of like first drew. Um, one of his great designs, and of course Harris Mann has very sadly passed away recently. So, you know, condolences. Um, but I think we always, I think we're starting to think of him as one of the great designers like we really should do. From the headlamps, I think the headlamps are actually from the car we looked at last week, actually, the Ital. I think there are tile headlamps on the front there, showing it as a hatchback, which we'll have a look at. Interior was never really one of the Ambassador's strong points. It's a little bit, dare I say, cheap and nasty. Maybe that's going a little bit too far, but it's only a very plain interior overall. Anyway, we'll do what we always do. We'll have a look at some of these images and some of the text for this L model. Okay, so here is the hatchback. Like I said, BL finally admitting that a hatchback was needed. Um, like, like I said at the start, quite a high sill. We have got a parcel shelf there. Um, but obviously it increased the practicality and obviously the main changes, the main revisions and the main work that went on this vehicle was to make it into a hatchback. Kind of weird though, I think. It must have cost them a lot to develop that from the um, Princess. But then it only lasted two years, I think. And it didn't sell well, so it must have been a complete waste of money really. Showing a little bit of a switch to drop them seats, not split, kind of like an elderly design, just one seat that folds down the back, so you can only have it as up 
or down. We can see from the rear there, Austin Ambassador 1.7L. Um, there was the 1.7 carried over, and we could get a 2 litre, no V6s though. And on this base, lowly model, we've just got a blanking plug there, no rear wiper. And the main picture for the L, looking quite plain, I think, really. Very plain wheels, no hubcaps on there. Black bumpers, no chrome. In fact, not very much chrome on there at all. But look at this very antiquated, sort of like, sort of your towing falls to pull you out if you get stuck in the snow, I guess. Strange to have them on the bumpers. You know, they go in there attached to the chassis. That's a bit weird, so... Whether there's a chance of pulling your bumper off there if you pulled from there, I don't know. But I still like it because, you know, if you look at modern cars, you try and tow a modern car out, all the towing loops seem to have disappeared for whatever reason. However, this is the L base model. We do get head restraints. So that's nice. Looking down, we look at that interior. Like I say, it's a little bit of a plain, uninteresting interior, really nothing too out of the ordinary this is a base model so no rev counter but then i say this is a base model with no rev counter none of the models had a rev counter even the vandom plaid didn't have a rev counter so that's a little bit weird isn't it i think that's these little things like that really affected the sales i think of the ambassador it's kind of like this sort of still quite a futuristic design i think i think the design overall is quite nice but they kind of left things out and cheapened the interior and here is the uh, another angle the seats look quite nice like i say we do have head restraints at least on there sort of like a bit of a color matched interior although it looks a little bit old-fashioned in this brown color manual gearbox only four speed again you can only get a four speed transmission it really needed that fifth speed at this time like the rest of british leyland really i don't know why they didn't do that but again obviously that would have put people off as well and if we look at the mirrors there you know twin remote control mirrors we get a not a bad radio for the time locking fuel cover so I you know, for a base model at this time, it really wasn't too bad. Lockable glove box, etc., etc. Don't forget your gla driving gloves and your driving sweets. So here is the text for this 1.7L. I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to pick certain things out. Starts off by saying motoring in the Grand Austin Manor, and again, that kind of like brings me back to the Wolseley. Would be nice if it said motoring in the Grand Wolseley Manor. It would have suited the car. I'm not saying it would have sold anymore, but I quite like the idea of it being called the Wolseley, actually. So this is powered by the 1783 BHP All-Series OHC engine with its high-efficiency aluminium alloy cylinder head. Interesting what it says next, though. The 1.7L has easy-going performance. Now, just think about that for a moment. You're trying to sell this car. What's the performance like? It's easy-going you just think slow don't you i mean why yeah they were trying to rise and i think this was one of the main problems with the ambassador really it was too slow for the times i think it couldn't do 100 miles an hour this 1.7 0 to 60 again around that 15 seconds i think it was about 14.8 seconds 0 to 60 which wasn't good for the time if you think about its competitors the Vauxhall cavalier for example that was a 1600 that could do 107 miles per hour not to 60 in 10.8 seconds so you can imagine why it didn't really sell very well and you can also imagine why it's an easy going performance and that not 60 time was really one of those things wasn't it you went down to the pub watch your car you know watch your car what's a not to 60 time you'd be embarrassed to say 14.8 seconds whenever else is saying or oh, 10 seconds 10.8 seconds it wasn't great it's showing potential economy 42 miles per gallon achieved at 56 i don't know how easy that was to do and it starts talking about you know this cavernous car a bit like a, an estate car with this fancy hatchback on it nothing really new but like i say price was key it was a lot of car for the money in 1983 so i think really that's 
how they actually sold it on on there. Um, if you do want to read this text, of course, I'll just leave it on a moment. If you do want to pause the screen and read that, I'm not going to read it all, though. No. We've got a lot to get through today. So we'll look at the optional extras that you could get on this L model. So you could get it as an automatic. You can get that rear wash wipe if you wanted to add it to your L. And then it's a choice of colours. And we'll certainly have a look at the colours later on. At the bottom here is telling you what the fuel economy figure is for the manual and the automatic. You know, even though it mentions it, it doesn't look anything particularly special, or does it? Particularly that automatic. Ambassador HL now moving up the range. Again, we'll look at some of these images and a little bit of the text there. So here is the rear view. Um, and again, I'm like, I really like the design of it. I don't know how you think. I'm, I'm sure most people probably hate it, but I think it's a wonderful design overall. Uh, badge at the back there, Austin Ambassador 1.7 HL. You could get this one with the 2 litre though. Showing it as uh, having that wiper on the back at least now. A little bit more chrome to brighten it up. So we don't just have a black bumper, we get a bit of chrome on there. We don't just get black rubbing strips, we get a little bit of chrome on there as well, which I think helps the overall look of the car. Looks like we even get some kind of like wheel caps on there as well. Interior wise, it doesn't really anything really stand out to me as being above the L from first glance. We've got the same steering wheel, same um, Austin Rover badge on the steering wheel as well. Again, no rev counter as none of these actually came with a rev counter. Interestingly, the only, as far as I know, anyway, the, the Austin Bassett never came with a left hand drive. I don't think they ever built a left hand drive, so wasn't available in Europe and obviously that affected sales as well. They didn't bother to do that, but like I say, only around for two years, was it really worth doing that? And then a look at the inside and what was really the selling point, a roomy car for not much money. And then we look, we get a radio stereo cassette unit now, front door bins, a little bit of a look at that display. And down the bottom here, a little bit of a look at those tweed fabric seats. Again, text-wise, if you want to pause the screen, you can read it all, although I'm not going to. So available as a 1.7 or a 2 litre now. And it's telling us you can only usually get the 2 litre with the HLS or the Vandenpla from the previous or first year there. And we get extras in the folding rear centre armrest doesn't situate in the pictures sadly but you know that was always a sign that he was moving up the trim a little bit and overall it looked nice from the outside didn't it with those hub caps and a bit of bright work on there as well uh, again it's talking about you know good value for money optional extras on this particular one again you could get that auto transmission Choice of you know automatics and black paints, and you could also get a slide and tilt sunroof if you wanted as well. And then a little bit of a comparison there between the manual and the automatic, the 1.7 and the 2 litre. Really, a 2 litre didn't affect fuel economy too bad, but you know, none of the figures are great, really, are they? Moving up the trim still further, we'll zoom in on some of these images. This is the HLS. Let's see what extras you get. So the first thing we notice really are those front fog lamps that have been added there, although it looks like some kind of like you bought from Halfords and just tacked on there. It really seems to be a bit of an afterthought. We do get this nicer grill with sort of this like silver treatment and this little square treatment, which I do think looks good in silver. It does push it up a little bit more upmarket. Again, we get these sort of like centre wheel caps on there as well. If we look down, we do get nicer seats as well. Um, these rather nice looking seats, um, which it refers to as, sorry, just trying to clear that up a little bit, which it refers to as a hairline velvet seat trim. Velvet seats, ooh, very classy now. We've still got wind down windows at the back. I think we've got electric front windows that have come into play now as well. So a little bit more of a classier interior, showing that rear armrest on there as well. From dash wise, again, it doesn't look hugely different, does it? It's still not got that rev counter on there. Looks like a bit of a two-tone color treatment. 
brightens it up a little bit, I guess. Well, we've got something that what they call the economy gauge on that, the econometer, just to you know, see if you're driving smoothly, I guess. On the central door locking now, um, looks like we also get a little bit of a pinstripe on there on the HLS model. Electric front windows, very nice. And an internally adjustable mirror. So when you move up the range, you do get these little features, although it still misses things like that rev counter, of course. You've still got that silly four speed instead of a five speed gearbox. But for the time, electric front windows, you certainly felt like you was moving up the trim. And then the final image is, oh, we can adjust the driver's seat. So reclining height angle for driver's seat. Fancy, we can move that seat around. So this one's only available as the 2 litre now, it's showing there it's got the front fog lamps, bright wheel embellishers, or rim, em rim embellishers as it calls it, and rear badging, HLS has new style interior with classy hairline velvet seat trim, hairline velvet door casing with special armrests, incorporating rear ice trays matte pockets behind the front seats electric front windows central locking very nice so yeah we're certainly moving up the trim we get these few little extras on there and like i say this is just available as a two liter we can choose you know black or metallic paint fishes finishes as options auto transmission tilt and slide steel sunroof we can get special alloy wheels that's a shame it doesn't show them and um, the same as fitted to the vanden plow though so that's going to be the next page so we will be able to have a look at those alloys fuel economy again nothing to shout home about so then we come to the austin ambassador owner's car you aspire to have the vanden plow although i think i'm supposed to call it the vanden plaz or plaz now I'm still going to call it the Vanden Plow because that's what I've always called it, but I'm probably saying it wrong, but hey, there we go. We'll have a look at some of these images. Gold, I think really suits it, doesn't it? With these you know, door cappings in wood, etc, etc. And we'll certainly have a look at those fancy alloy wheels too. So there we go, the Vanden Plow. Now, it is my favourite of the range, I must admit. First thing on the grill we get this extra little bit of chrome trim on top of that front grill giving it that sort of vandenplar look making it look like it's got a bigger radiator grill harking back to older vandenplars isn't it so it makes it look like it's got a bigger grill we got these fog lamps again we get this chrome um, on the bumper again we get chrome or chrome look at least door handles there um, main thing of course is these alloy wheels and I think the gold suits it also showing a nice steel sunroof on there as well that is particularly nice and there is another image of the uh sunroof sorry not a sunroof we are going to look at sunroof but there is another image of those alloy wheels a little bit later on so we'll look at that picture i think but first of all there is a look at that steel sunroof you can get uh, probably my favourite seat finishing for the Ambassador, this sort of luxurious Rachel fabric. They do look nice. Luxury matte pockets, you can see a little bit of wood in the distance there as well. Very nice. Closer look at that wood or pretend wood, what is it called? Burr walnut veneer door cappings. Very Van den Pla. That dashboard is finally lifted with that little bit of um, um, walnut veneer so it does look a bit nicer again we've got like a split um, two-tone type interior it does look a bit nicer but like I say even on the Van der Plaar, no rev counter so that's a little bit weird isn't it looks like that's the positioning for the front electric windows what else we've we got we get a rear courtesy lamp <laughs> fancy and finally those are what it refers to as cast alloy wheels um, which really suited i think 
So yeah, so this is the ultimate ambassador in its latest and most impressive form, proudly wearing the Van designation, which represents the best modern interpretation of classy coach building values. So, flagship model. Alloy wheels, bright radiator grille cappings, bright door handles, distinctive VP motifs. Very nice. We also get that Rochelle luxury fabric, deeply padded seats, special rear. It says rear here rests. I'm presuming it means headrests. Doesn't show a picture of the headrests. We really might have to have another look at that. A high grade shag pile carpets. Not only on the floor, but also the deep door kick strips, rear inertial, real seat belts, as standard steel slide and tilt sunroof, burr walnut veneer cappings on doors and fascia. And it starts talking about you. Know, it still can be used as a bit of a workhorse. I mean, like I say, this is my favourite of the Vanden Plaus. If I had a Vanden Plaus, this is really the model I would have had. Not much options apart from the colour. Again, those fuel economy figures. I think I'm just going to have another quick look to see if I can see those rear head restraints. I've just zoomed in on the main picture. You can just about see them there. Kind of like, they don't seem like proper head restraints. They look like more like just a, a longer seat. It's really hard to make them out on any picture, really. This is the interior picture now. You can just about make out how they go. They kind of like start in here and they just go higher so they don't feel like a proper adjustable head restraint really, do they? And I had to go all the way back to the very first picture to introduce the ambassador to show them headrests for the rear, how they were designed. Uh, also interesting, we can see the Van den Plo, uh, decal up there. And also at the top there, how it was just wrote Vanden Pla underneath the word Ambassador. We also get that unusual storage of that spur wheel, which certainly takes up a lot of that uh, boot space. Okay, and then it's a turn of the exterior body colours, so we'll go through them and see what colours were available for the Ambassador. So you could get Aaron White, you could get Black, you could get Rattan Beige, and you could get Silver Leaf Metallic. Cinnabar Red was not an ambassador colour. You could get Cashmere Gold Metallic. I think personally Cashmere Gold Metallic was my favourite for the ambassador, particularly that Van den Pla version. Um, you could also get Monza Red, a Porto Red. You couldn't get Premier Yellow, but you could get those great 80s colours of Opling Green Metallic and Zircon Blue Metallic. Although if you wanted to go back to the 70s, you could get Clove Brown. And then finally, Eclipse Blue you could get for the Ambassador. Moonraker Blue Metallic you could not. Specification time. I'm not going to really spend too much on the specifications. I'm not really going to say too much. But of course, at any point, you can actually pause the screen. Starts off with the um, Ambassador 1.7L. So we've got engine, transmission, suspension, steering, brakes, wheels and tyres, and electrical. Instrumentation of that L model. Interior features. So we'll zoom back a little bit to get all those interior features in there. And then we get body features before we move on to the HL like I said HL available as a 1.7 or the 2 litre you had a bit of a choice there like I said all 4 speed gearboxes which I think was even criticised when it came out for just having that 4 speed really needed a 5 speed gearbox automatic is just a 3 speed suspension using that hydro gas I think finally that hydro gas was like really working well actually I think that was just to prove that it actually worked it was here on the ambassador giving it quite a nice smooth ride steering brakes disc drum setup which you kind of like would expect wheels and tires electrical 
instrumentation interior features just about get that in there like I say pause the screen if you really need to body features before we move on to the ambassador 2 litre HLS saying you know like the HL with the added extras you know bright rim embellishes over the HL Before finally moving on to the Van der Plaar, Van der Plaar saying everything on as we've just looked on the HLS, except we got these cast alloy wheels, and these are the additions the Van der Plaar has over the HLS. Like I say, if you want to read it, just pause the screen. So there we go, that is the Austin Ambassador for 1983. Let me know your views on the Ambassador. I think the downside was certainly no rev counter on any of the models and no fifth speed gearbox which was a bit weird I'm sure it would have needed that fifth speed and it was certainly criticized at the time for not having that other negative of course is the performance figures compared to other cars although a lot of car for the money I think thank you so much for watching quarter likes uh, today please do like and subscribe we'll see you very soon take care and goodbye Thank you.